Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. As the world, or at least PC gamers, are awaiting NVIDIA's RTX 40 series, where, of course, the company are expected to announce RTX 4090, the architecture, as well as various other things, quote-unquote, AMD are not just sitting in the corner quietly seething. Instead, they have already teased a couple of very interesting features and architectural uh, benefits of the RDNA free architecture, not least of which is massively reduced power consumption. Further, and I'm sure this is completely coincidental as well, there has been a new leak for RDNA free, and it's touting the architecture itself is capable of getting close to 4 gigahertz. And of course, we're going to be discussing all of that in this very video after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by WhoKeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So let's just get a little bit of background before we discuss an intriguing blog post which is officially from AMD. Basically, performance per watt has been a target that AMD have been chasing for sev several GPU as well as CPU generations now, and it's no wonder because while performance per watt is great in terms of marketing, and let's face it, at the moment with energy prices being what they are, no one wants exactly high energy bills, but there are also numerous other benefits. Lower power consumption, especially for example with a GPU, means that it's more easily able to fit into different form factors or different usage cases. For example, you can more easily plonk it, technical term, into a games console or for example into a smartphone design and so on and so on. And this, of course, has been very beneficial for AMD, especially, for example, as it's cranking up the core counts in its server processors. We know that, I know that already went to uh, 64 cores, 96 is on the horizon, 128, you get the idea. You can't just do this, but then each core is basically sucking down a nuclear reactor's worth of energy. So a very interesting blog post has actually popped up from AMD themselves, and uh, it has been written by a senior vice president, corporate fellow, and product technology architect over AMD by the name of, hopefully I'll pronounce this correctly, Sam Nefseger. I apologize to the individual if I have pronounced that wrong. Um, but basically, they mention several interesting things. Now, this is all about gaming. So they specifically mention RDNA 3 here several times over. And they mention features like ray tracing, variable rate shading, upscaling technologies, and all of that jazz. But also, quickly add that graphics cards now are hitting over 400 watts. I'm sure that this is no reference at all to NVIDIA, so don't worry. The importance of performance per watt, now I'm skipping over a couple of paragraphs here, although I will of course leave a link to the blog post in the video description. I actually got sent this directly by AMD as well, their marketing department are working overtime actually today for GPU stuff. But what does this best performance per watt mean for gamers? In, additionally, in addition, excuse me, if I could speak, to producing less heat and consuming less power while delivering high performance over long periods of time, there are cost saving benefits as well especially when comparing the thermal design power across the current lineup of RDNA, um, RDNA 2 powered RX 6000 series cards versus the RTX 3000 series from NVIDIA. Now this is where things get a little more complicated, but uh, they actually mention a few things regarding how they've achieved this. Building power efficient designs is in our DNA. As the only company today delivering high performance CPU and GPUs, sad Intel noises here, AMD is uniquely positioned to leverage the learnings across our central engineering team and leverage our best IPs across product portfolios. For example, following the success of AMD's rise in desktop and mobile processors, the team, um, the incredible performance and efficiency engineering teams collaborated to apply our key learnings from Zen to RDNA 2. For example, we leveraged the dense CPU L3 memories to implement AMD Infinity Cache. 
They also then go on to a couple of other specifics. Optimize switching, improving the fundamental design of the architecture to ensure every gate switch and every clock toggled directly contribute to performance. High frequency design, tuning the design for high clock frequencies, pushing RDNA 2 frequencies beyond RDNA 1 by up to 30%, and smart power management, implementing intelligent power management within the GPU, which identifies the best opportunity to exploit higher frequencies and does so when it only improves performance. So I think it was over a couple of years ago at this point when um, RDNA 2 was being mostly rumored. I had actually reported that the engineers at AMD, the CPU engineers who were uh, working around the optimization, were actually contributing to RDNA 2's power efficiency. And this has been a strategy that AMD have employed over and over again to great success. It's not just a case of a team develops a specific piece of technology, but a team develops a specific piece of technology or an idea, and this principle can then help guide several other designs. So, for example, CPUs can benefit GPUs or APUs and server processes and AI accelerators and whatever else. And this has been extremely um, influential, I think, across AMD's product portfolio. It really is one of the reasons I think that they're doing so well across so many markets at the moment. It's going to be very interesting to see how RDNA 3 ends up performing, especially given AMD are now teasing several elements of RDNA 3. We continue our push for efficient gaming with RDNA 3, the first AMD graphics architecture to, level, to leverage the 5NM process and our chip packaging technology. RDNA 3 is on track to an estimated 50% improvement performance per watt better than RDNA 2. Wow, I just completely butchered that, but you guys get the idea. Truly bringing the top of the line gaming performance to gamers, cool and quiet and energy conscious designs. Contributing to the energy conscious designs, AMD uh, RDNA 3 refines the RDNA 2 adaptive power management technologies to set each workload specific operating points, ensuring each component of the GPU only uses the power it requires for optimal performance. It also introduces the next generation of Infinity Cache, projected to even offer more high density, lower power caches to reduce the power needs of graphics memory, helping cement RDNA 3 and Radeon graphics as a true leader in efficiency. We're thrilled with the improvements we're making with RDNA 3 and its predecessors, and we believe that we have more pulled from our architectures and advanced process technologies, delivering unmatched performance per watt, the stack as we continue our push for gaming. Now, AMD have also confirmed that the 3rd of November is going to be the date that basically RDNA 3 is unleashed to the world. I'm very much curious to see how it all stacks up when all of the official stuff is, you know, available. We can actually get our hands on the card and... It's going to be very interesting, to be honest, to see how two designs are so fundamentally different. Um, RDNA 4 is already well into the design process, and I'm going to be discussing a little bit of RDNA 4 stuff in a separate video in the next couple of days. I'm just double-checking a few things that I've been told at this point. Um, and obviously, they're going to continue with Zen and all of the other architectures as well. And it's going to be very curious to see how if at all, Intel can compete with this, because AMD's like execution at this point is just like relentless. Um, it isn't just a case of, as many of you know, they have like one or two teams. They've got several teams, and each one of them is working in a leapfrog fashion. So, for example, you have team A, B, and C. Team A work on architecture. Let's just say, just to make it really simple, say team A is working on RDNA 1, and team... Um, uh, B and C are working on 2 and 3, and then, of course, as Team 1 are finishing the design of RDNA 1, they can provide details and issues that they had, offer that to the previous, to, to the other two teams, and it continues and continues and continues. And basically, what's happening, of course, is this allows the engineers to consistently optimize, consistently learn, and just be extremely aggressive when it comes to the creation of these architectures. And it also means that you have a lot of collaboration within AMD. It's a very interesting system that they've managed to develop. And I do think that NVIDIA's RTX 40 is going to be very impressive as well. I think uh, NVIDIA do have a lot of uh, similarities, not necessarily in the method of execution of the company, but they also are pretty relentless in their execution as well. So it's going to be very interesting to see how these two companies end up competing as we get into RDNA 4 as well as Blackwell.
Now I'm going to discuss the 4 GHz rumor, and this is courtesy of 9550 Pro on Twitter, also known as HXL. Of course, I will leave a link to their tweet in the description of this video. There's not much to say here other than the fact that they have teased the fact that RDNA 3 can hit close to 4 GHz. Now, so for some time now, I've mentioned 3 GHz is the target for RDNA 3 at like a minimum. I think um, it's like my current specifications, I'm saying this off the top of my head, it's like 3.3 GHz for Navi 33 is like a target. Um, and overclocking it can go actually higher than that. Now, I have personally been told that 3.5 or 3.7 gigahertz is probable for RDNA 3. And if you think about it logically, if you're getting like 3.2, 3.3 gigahertz, obviously, you know, boost clocks for GPUs are kind of a bit weird anyway. They go up and down based on, you know, multiple things per frame of animation, let alone per second. But yeah, let's just say 3.3 gigahertz and you add 10% because a lot of GPUs can do like 5, 10, 15 percent, especially RDNA 2, like if you look historically at what RDNA 2 can achieve, it can go nuts. So when we were doing our overclocking experiments with RDNA 2, I think we had two cards. We had a reference RX 6800 XT if memory serves. Uh, we did some um, tweaking on that and we hit like 2.7 or 2.7 something gigahertz. Uh, obviously that again is cranking up the power limits of the GPU and doing some other bits and pieces. And then we did much the same with a Gaming X Trio card and I think hit around the same frequencies. Now I do have a video of that up on the channel, um, although it's a little old now. So the methodology basically is much more elegant and simplified ways of uh, you know increasing the uh, power limits of the card. But it's still really interesting to see what the RDNA2 architecture is capable of. And hypothetically, I imagine much the same could be said for RDNA3. Like, there's probably going to be quite a lot of room left in the tank. Now, obviously, if you start cranking the frequencies up to X percent, you're going to lose a lot of the efficiency of the architecture. You start going out of that sweet spot. But hypothetically, it's going to be very interesting to see what it's capable of. I'm going to be very curious to see what overclocking RTX 30, I'm oh sorry, RTX 40 versus RDNA 3 can net you in terms of benefits. Uh, we don't, of course, know yet what the limitations of the architectures are. For example, is RTX 40 memory bandwidth constrained or is it just raw clock frequency? What about GPU utilization? Is there, you know, any issues in either of the GPUs when not all of the shaders are being fed? Blah, 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 blah. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all of that plays out. Uh, hypothetically as well, um, AMD are kind of doing quite well anyway because obviously their designs are almost certainly going to be used on the PlayStation 6 and uh, whatever the hell the Xbox is going to be called. Like God knows what Microsoft are going to call it. It's probably going to be like the Xbox Square or something like that at this point because they're just so just random with their names it seems. Um... Now, I don't think it will use RDNA 3. Uh, this is hypothetical. I don't know what the specs of the PlayStation 6 are going to be, honestly. Uh, Magic's probably going to be more like RDNA 4 or even a later architecture, depending on the launch windows of those uh, of those um, consoles. Uh, the PlayStation 5 Pro and whatever the hell the Pro Xbox is going to be called, if they launch, are more likely to be based on like, RDNA 3, I'm guessing. That again, if I have a company launch it, especially with all of the shortages and stuff that have occurred. Um, but yeah, I think the next generation of hardware is going to be absolutely just incredibly interesting. Um, and you know, looking at the Igor's lab PCB image that we saw, or technically a diagram, it looks like it's up to like 450 watts for the reference design. Well, reference custom design, I've heard up to 500 watts. So it's going to be very interesting to see what these things are actually capable of. Um, as always, roll on the 3rd of November, because uh, I wonder how many people are just going to wait on GPUs. Let me know, guys, uh, in the comments down below. Are you waiting to kind of get your hands on RDNA 3 or wait for reviewers to get their hands on RDNA 3, then make a decision? Are you just going to jump into the waters of RTX 40? What are you going to do? Um, obviously, there's no right or wrong answer necessarily because both have a lot of positives and negatives. I mean, at the end of the day, we don't know what the performance is going to be like of either series of uh, cards. It's, so it's going to be kind of like... I think mean, it's going to be down to NVIDIA to make a lot of 
uh, an impression with RTX 40 and obviously AMD are just going to continue to try to steal a little bit of the thunder, a few of the headlines, so it's going to be kind of fun. With that said, thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.